Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Boys Club in the five minute pool on ICC. Boys Club is rating 2348, and not much info about them on their profile. Peak rating of 2396. Let's play a Ross Limo. G6 this time. Um, you know, I'm just going to keep this positional. I'm just going to take on C6, like, voluntarily. This is probably not theoretically critical, but... I'm just trying to bring out my pieces in a natural way. Um, let's play knight... Let's play knight C3. How about that? If knight F6, I can play E5. This is a nice way to proceed. Maybe now A3. Looking to play B4. This is a good way to attempt to open up the position on the queen side. And they are seemingly allowing that. Probably they'll take and then play knight f6 thereafter. What if I take? If I take, they could take with a g-pawn because I can't go queen h5 check. I sort of want to open up the center, but it's not possible. Well, let's just play b4 as planned. And if knight f6, maybe b5, although there's this question of, about the e4 pawn. I think I can do this, though. Moreover, I think I want to trade my B-pawn for the C-pawn. And look to open lines. So if C, C takes B5, Knight takes B5, F takes E4, D takes E4, Knight takes E4, Queen D5. Forks the Knight and the Rook. Granted, they could just play a move to defend C6. I might play a move to defend E4 in that case, like Rook E1 or something. Hmm. Instead pushes past. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to play bishop g5. I don't think my dark square bishop is that useful in this structure. Because he's already got pawns established on dark squares in the center. So bishop g5 just pin the knight. I'll look to do knight reorganizations like knight d2 to c4 or knight d5. Those moves are on the agenda. Okay, let's go knight d2. I'm not going to take on f6 yet because I don't have to. It'd be nice if he played h6 to expend a tempo to get me to do so. You know, I might play knight c4 all the same and just be okay with a trade of the light square bishop for the knight. Yeah, let's do that. Rook a6 might be a good way to pressure d6, in fact. Oh, he takes it there. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm blundering anything yet, but I missed that. He could do that. <laughs> okay, let's take this way. So I would have preferred to be able to take with a pawn, but since my d-pawn needs to stay guarding the knight, I'll have to do it this way. I'm attacking d6. They could play d5, but then I have knight takes c5, maybe. I'm attacking this bishop. So how do they defend d6? Maybe they can't. Is knight takes e4 giving up the queen possible? Knight takes e4, bishop takes d8. Knight c3, queen e1. Could be played. Yeah, they don't get enough in that case. Yeah, I might be winning a pawn. And it'd be a very nice pawn to win, too, the d-pawn. I'll probably take it with the c knight, if possible. Leave the e knight blockading the e-pawn. I like this Ross Limo variation. I haven't really studied it at all. I've just played it in the games that you've seen posted on my channel. I've seen, like, snippets of Ross Limo games and, um, you know, analysis in various places, but... I don't have a lot of experience with it, but it appeals to like my positional instincts. He's spending a lot of time here. There might not be a good solution to his problems. If bishop g4, I could take on f6. Bishop takes maybe queen d7 then. I have f3 in that case. Yeah, bishop g4 does not work tactically. Well, spent probably a minute and a half at least on this move. If h6, I can just take on f6 with the bishop, or even knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, bishop takes h6. I've got nice options all around. He does play d5. Okay, so I was intending to take here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's 
changing. If bishop g4, I have bishop takes f6 once again. Okay, so he's going to get me to take on e6 and just play the position that way. Probably a good choice. Okay. I might be able to play rook a6 after this, interestingly. Yeah, let's do that. Rook a6, hit the queen. My knight is still under attack, and he could go and attack my bishop too, like queen f5, but I can take on f6 and it's fine. Hmm. So knight d6 maybe. Yeah, let's go knight d6. Attack the queen and then play c4 and try to support our knight with c5. Let's remove this capture. Well, this is looking promising. Maybe knight e8 he should play to try to exchange my knight. He takes instead. Yeah, now I have ideas like taking on f6 and then going queen d5 check. This knight could turn into a monster on this square. Okay, so queen d5, king h8, knight f7, he has queen takes f7, that's not working. Let's just push the pawn. We'll keep queen d5 in reserve for if, when we need it. Yeah, I think now c6 is strengthened. Our knight's defended by our queen, so we can play this move. Let's back the knight off. Yeah, let's go here. Maybe infiltrate with the queen if we can. If he plays a rook to d8, we can play queen a4. I gotta figure this pawn is gonna be lost pretty soon. He's just gonna try to open the position. We can take on a7 and then play b6, but we lose c6. Let's play this move just to be a killjoy. Queen f7. He had a response ready. <laughs> Uh, knight e5, I guess he's going queen f5. c7 is possible, though. c7, queen takes, I take g6, take on h5 thereafter. Let's do that. Nifty little tactical idea. Open up the rook. And now I can go rook c6 if I need to. In order to assist in the defense of the knight. F2 is well guarded. Bishop and Rook both covering that square, so no no tactical concerns. Hmm. Just play well actually, okay, he might be trying to come into g4. I think he probably is. Okay, so let's do this. And then play. Hmm. He's going after that B pawn. I think I can just play here. Yeah, let's do that. And we're defending b5 at the same time. Now we're hitting the rook and hitting g6. Check. Hmm. I can take here. Let's just play h4, make sure we never get back rank checkmated. Yeah, it's going to be too little, too late for him now. Take this pawn. Threaten c8 queen. Check. Straight Check. queens. Check. Completely kill all his chances. Yeah, and he resigned. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. So g6, this is one of the most reliable moves as far as I'm aware. Uh, in combating the rustling move variation. So castles, bishop g7, and then take. I think like c3 is an alternative treatment, trying to go for d4 in the center. But I just wanted to saddle him with the doubled pawns before he um, gets it in his head to like move the knight or whatnot. So we're kind of carrying through on our positional threat of taking the knight. And as I said, I think this is a pretty modest setup for white. I'm not really expecting to um, checkmate him out of the opening with this, but... I do like it, because we have the better pawn structure, the play is taken out of forcing territory. This, this type of position appeals to me in a blitz game.
So I remember a Fisher game where he went a3, b4 in a Ross Limo. So that's what I was trying to uh, model my play on here. I think Fisher did it as a pawn sacrifice, actually. Like he played b4 first and then after take, and then he played on a played a3. Um, obviously, there's probably not a knight on c3 when he does that. But So knight f6, I played b5. He pushed past c5. But yeah, that might be a strategic error since it kind of seeds control of the d5 square in the long run. So c takes, knight takes, and there's this nifty tactical uh, shot, queen d5, I was mentioning. Loose pieces drop off, remember those undefended pieces. So that would win material. Um, if bishop here, I think you know queen takes a8 is probably working, although not as huge as the computer is saying. Idea, queen takes a8, knight c7. But um, is the engine preferring in that position? Take, take. Take queen d5, bishop f5. Engine says I can just play knight g5 instead. Huh. And if knight takes g5, bishop takes g5. Trying to deflect the queen away from guarding the rook. Yeah, and d6 is falling too. This is good for plus 22 <laughs> for white. So maybe he should have taken though. And then played like a6, I think the computer was saying. And I don't have to retreat this knight yet because he is pinned. But yeah, something like c4. But he played c5, I played bishop g5, and it turned out very well. Knight d2. This knight stands poorly on f3. It doesn't really have anything to do. So that's why I want to get it to the c4 square. And this knight is bound for d5, if possible. Yeah, and I thought for a second after he took that I had blundered, but it's fortunate for me that I have knight takes e4 and that it works out tactically. Yeah, and he just he doesn't have a good way to defend this d-pawn. So here he thought for a really long time. And he thought for two whole minutes on this move. Wow. Almost two minutes. So maybe instead of uh, taking on e4, he should do something like, I was thinking f4, but rook a6 is also a convenient way to attack this pawn. I mentioned that as well. Uh, maybe h6, like the computer was saying, trying to at least force me to decision here. Bishop takes, rook takes, and if rook a6, maybe bishop f7 or something. But it looks nice for white. I get a lot of play. Attack a7. Also, b6 is a threat now that I'm doubled on the a file. And his bishops don't really play. The position's not open enough yet for those pair of bishops. Um, so here, d5. Knight takes c5. Queen c8. So now we're up a pawn with a much better position. And just wanted to make sure I didn't give the material back. And also keep the pressure on. So he's down on the clock. Should be winning for white. I don't want to like think too hard and you know make it harder on myself than it has to be. Okay, here queen g5 check. check, king h8, b6 is a nice idea. Yeah, and he can't take the pawn because of the rook hanging. That would have been nice to spot. I just played c5, like getting the c pawn a little bit closer. Drop the bishop back. Push the pawn to c6. Yeah, and I don't think my technique was like perfect or anything, but, you know, it was more than sufficient. We're pretty solidly winning here. Um, just need to make sure we don't blunder something towards our king. So yeah, c7, the point is like now the queen and the rook are coordinating against g6. So if queen takes c4, Check. I can take here and then chop the knight. And we're going to be winning. This king is wide, wide open too. So knight back to f6. Knight d7, I was just trying to trade. You know, knights are dangerous pieces in blitz games, so if I can swap off that piece, uh, all the better. So he took, I took with my queen. Rook f7. Oh, okay, I could have just queened here. Didn't notice that. I just moved my queen. Check. Yeah, and I don't think anything really happened towards the end to shake the evaluation. Check. Yeah. Check. Check. So, yeah, nice little variation. Ross Limo. Um, I'll have to look at the theory on this one because, again, I'm, I'm positive I didn't play this in the, the most theoretically challenging way, but still, uh, the fact that I can play this way against a main line of the Sicilian and uh, get a pretty nice position to work with out of the opening, um, at least to me, indicates that it's a pretty practical weapon, probably more so than d4 if you're, if you're trying to decide between the two and you want to stay in open Sicilian territory, or um, you want to stay in mainline Sicilian territory, let's say. 
Um, probably bishop b5 is a safer bet than d4. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.